Good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be covering more about Jeskola Buzz and in particular we're going to make sort of a song template file. What I mean by this is we're going to do an entire project file in Buzz that contains a whole bunch of different instruments that are already set up and ready to go. That way when we want to compose a song, all we have to do is just open up this preset, save a copy, and start writing. I'm actually doing this video today because I had a viewer hit me up in my comment section and they sent me a link to another video where someone had made an entire orchestral preset inside of Renoise, which is another program that is similar to Jeskola Buzz, but it has its own differences. And they want to know if it was possible to do something similar inside of Buzz and how exactly you would go about doing that. So this is shoutouts to Cece, or maybe it's pronounced CC, I'm not sure. Please forgive me if I'm not pronouncing this correctly, but shoutouts to you. This video is for you, and I hope you find it helpful. I really hope I'm doing this right, and I'm covering everything that you need to know in this video. And if there's anything that I left out at all, please hit me up down in the comments again, and feel free to ask any questions, and I will be happy to come through and clarify for you later. <laughs> So the obvious question that we need to start this talk with is, what is Renoise exactly? Now I don't have a lot of experience inside of Renoise myself, I actually had to do quite a bit of research before this video so I knew exactly what I was talking about and hopefully my information here is up to date. But Renoise is also a tracker program, just like Jeskola Buzz is a tracker. It is an older way of composing electronic music, and I believe it got started back in the days of like the Amiga computers and like Atari video games around that kind of era. And then other programs like Buzz and Renoise and also Pro Tracker, they've sort of brought the idea of the classic tracker kind of into more of a modern DAW related music composing workspace. So one of the biggest and most important differences to me seems like the fact that Renoise has all these different tracks and you can assign the tracks directly to different instruments and different effect automation. Whereas Jeskola Buzz kind of does the opposite sort of approach. You add in all of your instruments and your effects beforehand, and then you can give each one of those a track in the sequencer view if you want to. So I prefer the buzz workflow of doing things, but this is also hugely influenced by the fact that I've been using buzz for probably over 80 years now, and I just have a lot of experience on the platform. So using the more advanced features of buzz is a lot more easy and readily apparent to me. And I also have a lot of songwriting and many years worth of project files tied up in buzz too that I haven't quite finished yet. So um, it's pretty hard for me to switch away from using buzz, even if there was some Something else that was probably a little bit more powerful in different ways. Not saying that Renoise is more powerful than Buzz or isn't, I don't really know for sure, but we can definitely look into some of the differences and we can definitely compare what the workflow is like between Renoise and Buzz as far as creating this orchestral template. A lot of the discussion I can find online as far as Buzz versus Renoise it seems like to be a little bit outdated by a few years, but the general consensus is that Buzz is a little bit more flexible in some ways, but it's also a bit more buggy and more prone to crashes and things like that. And I think for the most part, this is sort of outdated news. I think that in the more recent versions of Buzz that have come out, they've put a lot more attention into um, like crash protection and making sort of like a fail-safe state. So if something goes wrong, it doesn't crash the entire program and make you lose progress. It will just crash the one instance of the machine and it will pop up with red letters telling you it crashed. And then you can just close it out and replace it with something else or fix the problem or whatever. Long story short, in recent releases, Buzz has become a lot more stable. So if you see people on the internet telling you that Buzz is buggy and full of garbage and Renoise is the stable version of that, I think that's a bit of an outdated opinion myself. And another disclaimer that I have to give before I get started here is this orchestral preset video that I'm trying to emulate. By the way, I'll put a link to that down in the description. 
So the setup that I'm trying to emulate uses a plugin called Contact, which gives you a whole bunch of different instruments and options that I do not have. It seems to be sort of like a package deal where you get a bunch of different instruments all under the banner of one VST plugin, and it gives you different options on how you route the input to this. So each track can play a different note. This will be important later. I'll talk more about this in a bit, but I just want to give you the disclaimer that they used contact in the original. I'm going to try to replicate the same setup using free, simple VST plugins. I'm going to stick to only using free VSTs from DSK Music, and I will give you a link to their page down below. You can download all of the instruments that I'm using in this video. All right, so here we are in Buzz. This just gives you a general idea of what we're working with here. I just tried to add as many different varied kinds of orchestral instruments that I could. If you look at the original video I'm copying here, you'll see that he has like 16 different string instruments. He's got like 16 different brass section instruments, a few synths. There's probably about like a total of around 50 different patches that this guy has loaded into his preset and I'm not going to go quite that overboard with Buzz and you'll find out why in a minute. Anyway, this will just give you an idea of what we're shooting for. We just want to have like an entire orchestra worth of stuff at once and we want it to all play together somewhat nicely. We want it all to sound good and to perform good and we want it just to be ready to go for the next time we want to sit down and compose. We want to have it all done beforehand. So I want to start out from a blank file here, and I want to actually show you how we build this whole thing from the ground up. So the first thing I like to do is just add in my little audio meter, the Jed Shiva meter. I need to search for that in the search bar. Drag and drop, shift and drag to connect. This is going to be our audio meter. This is just going to tell us how loud everything is. I do this in every one of my Buzz videos. Anyway, now we'll search for DSK. And this will give us all of our different orchestral instruments. For the sake of starting out here, let's just take this DSK strings. Let's put it right there. Shift, click, drag, connect. Let's make sure this isn't super loud starting out, just so I don't blow out your all eardrums. We just double click on this and then open up its interface. And then we can hit, I got a MIDI controller here, so. Just hit the key on the MIDI controller and make sure it's working right. All right, and let's just repeat this for a few things. Let's bring in our acoustic keys. That's the piano. There we go, I got piano. Make that a little bit quieter. And by the way, to change the volume on these, you just right click on top of this arrow, and then I use my mouse scroll wheel, and that lets you go up and down in even decibel increments. You can just grab it and drag it around too, but then it leaves you with these ugly numbers. I know it doesn't really matter. It's just kind of an OCD thing that I do. I like to have an even amount of decibels here. Anyway, just get a few more in here for testing sake. Let's do the choirs. And then let's do the basses. Let's give us four to play with to start with. Let's pop these open real quick and test. A little quieter. Okay, that doesn't actually sound like a bass. So if we just hit our MIDI keyboard a few octaves down, that should give us the sound we're looking for there. Yeah, that's good. So now we want to adjust these so it responds to the MIDI controller good, and we can do that kind of just like they did in the original video. Here's how you get to the settings. You double click and open it up, go to edit, and then from edit you want to come down here to where it says settings. And then this gives you all of your MIDI related kind of controls here. It lets you transpose the note, it gives you some controls for the velocity. So. Let's take this velocity, the max velocity down by quite a lot. I'm like even hammering on the keys right now too. And like you can tell it's, it sets the top limit for it. So you can tell that works. 
There's a lot of other options involved here that I'm not going to touch on right now, but as far as replicating the original orchestral preset, they didn't seem to do a lot to their setup besides just messing with the velocity and also the attack and kind of things like that. So there's kind of a lot of options to dive into here. This is where you're going to want to mainly focus is just on the velocity settings. That's going to give you the biggest difference of how the instrument sounds when you perform it. So the other thing they did in the original video is they adjusted how much reverb each one of these had by an effect send kind of setup. And I don't know, by default, Buzz doesn't have an effect send but that's okay because I actually like the way that you route effects in Buzz uh, a little bit better than the effects send system. Because everything in Buzz is modular, it's visual, so you just add your effects right in here and then you tell which one of these instruments gets routed into that effect. You just draw a line right there. So let's bring it up. I like to use the built-in Buzz. Um, it's called the Sonic Verb. There's a good buzz internal reverb, so kind of the lazy and easy way to do this would just be to put it right here on the master channel, and then everything has reverb, right? Let's, uh, let's tell the difference here. You can kind of tell. Anyway, you can hear how it's working, hopefully. So the way we have this routed is the reverb goes right between our audio meter and our master channel. So it's literally the last thing we have in our chain and everything is going to get reverbed before this point. If we wanted to set this up more like an effect send kind of thing and then figure out exactly how much reverb we want each one of these instruments to have, we can definitely do that as well. We just want to disconnect this. Here's a cool trick. You just grab it and drag it all the way here to the edge of the screen and it disconnects for you. And then we'll just put it right here to the side. And then we will also connect this into the master channel. And then every instrument that we want to have reverb, we will connect that into here. So we'll just go strings, keys, choirs, and basses. All right, so this is kind of the beginning of our uh, our mock effect send kind of setup. Let's open this up. Now we want to make sure that this channel has no dry level at all. All that will be coming out of this is the reverb signal. And we also want to turn the bypass off too. Um, just tweak a few settings really quick. I want to crank up this room size so you can really hear it, the color. Um, maybe we'll turn the high pass up a little bit more so I like it that way. So now we'll close this, and now each one of these volume sliders will control how much effects send reverb each one of these instruments has. So do you kind of see how that works? In lieu of each one of them having an effects send knob, this volume level going into the reverb is the amount of effects send for all this, right? Let's turn this down so the bass is kind of dry mostly, and then we'll have the strings will be a little bit less reverby, but we'll make sure that the keys and the choirs stay at the default level there. And I just want to throw this out here really quick. Since there are many different ways that you can do the same thing inside of Buzz, if there are any old school Buzz users watching here, and if I just made myself look like a complete idiot and there's an easier way to do an effect send, please do let me know. I do like to teach, but I also like to learn at the same time, and knowledge is power. So if there are more cool ways to do this, please do enlighten us. So basically from here, you would just go ahead and repeat this process for as many different instruments as you wanted to add to your preset. And the way that Buzz works is that it is completely dependent on the specs of your PC whether or not Buzz is going to be able to load this many instruments and effect patches at the same time and actually be able to run smoothly. You're going to max out the RAM and the processing speed of your computer long before Buzz reaches any sort of limitation 
that's imposed by its own design. So I tried it out on my computer and I hit a limit at a certain point and that limit is going to be different for you than it is for me. So you're really just going to have to ask yourself, how much of this do you really need in one song? How many of these instruments are you actually going to use in one composition? And you definitely want to be going for a less is more sort of approach. The more sound that you can get out of these, the better. So these DSK plugins are kind of cool also because you'll see like the strings has two channels for the strings, right? So I can, it's just cello right now, but I can make one of these, um, like a violin. And then I can make the octave different. And it's really cool, it gives you like this half octave kind of thing, so it gives you a harmony. All coming from one instance of this VST, you can make it sound like you have two different instruments happening at the same time. So I will show you a little trick for getting some extra performance out of Buzz when you have a lot of different machines set up at the same time. You're going to want to right click anywhere here in the machine view and we're going to go down to settings and then we'll go over to this tab that says engine. Under the engine tab there is an option process muted machines. It says it keeps processing machines even when they are muted. Let's get that tool tip back. It uses more CPU but makes transitions smoother. So what we can do when we have a lot of things going on is we just check this process muted machines to false and that means that anything that isn't currently playing a note, it won't be processed. If you mute the machine, just click right here, you'll see it adds these parentheses around the name and that makes it so it will stop making sound altogether. Anything that you have muted like this will also be ignored when Buzz is computing the sound. So this is a really good way to just focus on the active elements and not waste resources on the other ones that aren't doing anything at the moment. So I think that because of the limitations on your RAM and your CPU, it's probably more efficient to have your preset instruments set up in smaller groups and then import the smaller groups as you need them into your song. And I'll show you a cool way you can do this inside of Buzz right now. So let's say we want to make just these string instruments into a group, right? So let's select everything else besides these and then let's delete them. So just click and drag to make a box selection. And then we just hit the delete key. Click and drag, delete, click and drag, delete. Let's also disconnect our Jed Shiva meter. And then we'll delete this too. And the reason yeah. we delete the Jed Shiva meter is we don't want to have anything with duplicate names when we're bringing it into the new file. So also if you think there's going to be any sort of clashing naming convention, I like to just Hit rename really quick and just add like an X or something at the start of it. We just don't want, when we add this to our new file, we don't want the computer to get confused because two of these have the same name. Um, it doesn't always cause problems, but it could cause problems. So The last thing we have to really be careful about is that this master machine doesn't have any patterns for it. So we'll just click over here to the pattern view. Up here we can select the machine, the master machine, and we can tell this doesn't have any patterns. But if it did, we would want to go through and remove all the patterns that it had. That way it doesn't get confused when we import it into the new project. So now that we have only these machines remaining, let's go ahead and click Save As. And we'll give us a name like Orchestral Strings and save it. Okay, so now we're back over here. Now all we have to do is just right click, select import song, and then we'll select our orchestral dash strings. Now we'll import all of those machines we just set up right over here into buzz. And then all we have to do is just simply add them into our meter. And then we'll add them into our reverb. And then we are all set and good to go with these new instruments. There we go. So what I really suggest you do is I suggest you go and you make a bunch of different little groups of 
instruments like this and then when you go down to make a new piece then you decide okay this piece needs a string section we import the string section okay this piece needs brass we go and we import our imaginary file where we have a bunch of brass instruments that we didn't make yet right and so on but i think it's a lot better of an approach for buzz anyway to just build it in smaller groups like this instead of just having one file where you have like 50 different instruments and you probably don't end up using half of them because you're just going to have really poor performance in buzz having that much stuff in memory if you can even handle having that much stuff in memory at all Okay, so that was a pretty long setup. The original video I'm copying also gave an example of how to record different stuff with these instruments. So that's what we're gonna do next. The first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we have a pattern. So we can hit this DSK strings. We wanna go into the pattern view here and then find that same machine over here in the list. And then we wanna make our pattern properties as long as we can. This makes this whole list a lot longer for us. And if we don't already have one existing, here's how we do it. We just go new pattern, which is also control and enter. This lets you choose how many rows are in the pattern. We want 512. We just want the longest pattern that we can have for convenience's sake. And what that number is telling you is like each one of these spaces where you can enter something is considered to be one row. So it has 512 spaces. Each one of these corresponds to the BPM and, you know, whether you want it to be a quarter note, 16th note, 32nd note, whatever. None of that is going to really matter for us now. Let's go over here to the sequence view. That's also F4. And now we can add these patterns in to the sequence. Just like that. And what I'm doing here is I just push the zero key. Because over here on the right hand side, you can say it's, it tells you if you press zero, then it will give you the pattern zero zero if you press one it will give you the pattern zero one right so we can just go through and for however long we want our song to be we just make sure that we have enough patterns to cover the entire length so now i can put our end point down here and just control e to set the end point you can do control b to set the start point too that's b for beginning e for end okay so if we select all of this thing as our loop, and we'll see that it's a, the loop is like two minutes long, and that's great, but we also don't wanna record for two minutes on this tutorial, so I'm gonna shorten it. And it all changes up here, and you can tell up here, I mean, if you change the BPM to be a lot slower, you can see this loop time getting longer too, right? Anyway, we should just be able to come back over here to our machine view. Let's pop open our DSK strings and Let's come back over here to the sequence editor, hit our record button. Okay, we'll see if that recorded. And it in fact indeed did record. You can see it puts all of our note names and uh, that's our velocity. That's the note delay. Each one of these columns here gives you a different option different things that you can control in our VST loader. So the recording part is kind of just as simple as that. You can also record your effect automation right into the same pattern too. And how we would go about doing that is uh, click all over here on the learn, go to auto learn, and then let's just pick a few things. Let's take this uh, second channels overall level and just move that slider. And you'll see over here in your learn menu, is a VST level, right? So that's what that auto learn does is while this is on, any of these knobs or sliders that you touch, let's go with the delay mix on this one. Any knob or slider that you touch while the auto learn is on will get populated in this list. And this also directly translates over to what numbers are on your tracks over here, right? So you see that this is level is zero. So that will be recorded onto track zero and then mix is one <laughs> if i can keep the menu open mix is one so that will appear over here on track one i want to really just highlight the first little bit of this so we'll make our loop shorter this button make sure it will keep looping while you're recording so you can just set that set your range and hit record and it will just keep accepting MIDI input to be recorded for as long as this is running.
Is there recording the automation for the second channel? Let's automate this reverb level too. Or delay level, I mean. This seems to do some weird stuff. Anyway, yeah, I should have kind of set up these effects a little bit more before I started recording this lesson, but I think you get the idea how any of these options inside of your VST can be recorded into your pattern just like that with the MIDI editor. You can also bind these different sliders and knobs to controls on your MIDI controller. It kind of just depends on what hardware you have available. Um, you can see that I just control this with the mouse and I still get a decent result out of it too. So if you don't have a controller, it's not a big deal. So I think that's kind of the best that I can cover what was going on in that original video as far as just adding in the instruments and adjusting them so they sound how you want them to sound and being able to record the notes and being able to record the automation. From here on, it would just be a matter of populating this machine view over here with as many of these machines as you possibly can until your computer crashes, basically. <laughs> And again, an important thing to remember here is that the original that I'm emulating was made with Contact. I am not a Contact user myself. I have made it a philosophy to stick to free music making software, at least for the most part. There's a few things that I've had to purchase, but for the most part, I like to operate for free and I also like to teach people how to make things for free if I can. So contact is not something I'm going to buy, it's not something I'm going to cover, it's not something I'm going to download the trial version of just for the sake of learning it for a little bit and making one video and not touching it again. It's just not something I'm going to do for this example. However, the cool part about using contact, at least what it looks like from the original video, is that contact will have multiple tracks for instruments inside of one instance. So I'm accomplishing all of this by adding eight different instances of a VST plugin into my project. And Contact appears to only load one instance and gives you multiple tracks. I think the problem with using this inside of Buzz is as far as I know, Buzz can't use different tracks inside of the sequence view over here. It cannot assign each one of these tracks to a separate instrument inside of contact. At least not if you're only using one instance of contact, right? In order for that to work, you would have to be able to route your input into this machine somehow. And I think by default in Buzz, these machines can only get input from the pattern editor or from the MIDI controller. There is not an out of the box solution for routing some sort of signal or input besides this to control these machines. And again, if there are any Buzz users out there who have had experience with VSTs that take multiple sources of input, maybe if there's even somebody out there who has tried contact inside of Buzz, please do let me know down in the comments your experience and whether it works or not. Personally, I haven't found any VSTs in my wanderings that will allow you to send multiple sources of input to one instance. I think kind of a similar way you could go about this in Buzz is to use a machine called the IX Split. And what this does is it allows you to map different ranges on your MIDI controller keyboard to different instruments. And this is broken up by like frequency ranges and uh, spectrums of notes, right? So you could say that your lowest two octaves on your keyboard are going to control your bass synths, while the next two octaves are going to control your rhythm elements, while the next two octaves are going to control your lead elements. I haven't messed around with it a lot myself, and it's kind of a heavy workflow, so going into the IX split way to do this would have to be a video of its own, and I think I'm going to get there at some point, but this is already going to be a pretty lengthy video, and I don't think that there's time to add much more talk about that in here. Now I know that the original probably looked a lot better than mine. As far as I know, there really isn't a good way to add like a custom color to these, so I've kind of looked through all these menus and I tried to find some way to make these color coded or something like that and I'm not seeing it myself. 
I've never placed that much importance on aesthetics when working in Buzz anyway. Usually my machine view is just an absolute mess. And it's the same thing over here in the sequencer view. I don't know if there is a way that you can change the colors of each of these tracks up at the top. It just doesn't really give you the option to do that too much here. But you can give them custom names. So something I like to do to sort of organize my buzz machines is like maybe take everything that's a drum and put a D at the front of it. We could take like everything here that is a string instrument and put an S in front of it. So you go like right click, rename. Instead of cello, we'll call it S dash cello. Instead of contrabass, we'll call it S dash contrabass instead of viola. I mean, so on, so on for all of these, right? Oops, okay, that didn't work. And you see, that will allow you to at least organize these so you know this part over here where everything has an S is a string instrument and you would just kind of copy that same naming convention and idea for all the rest of the instruments that you have in your preset. Now I would be remiss in my duties as someone who teaches mixing if I didn't point out that a setup like this is a fast track to a complete mixing catastrophe. There's lots of sound sources in similar ranges, so that's going to be a lot of frequencies clashing with each other. So if you absolutely have to write a song that has 20 different tracks going at once, I understand that certain genres like orchestra definitely call for that frequently. The mixing is going to get tougher the more stuff you add into your song. So you'd want to group like similar stuff into buses, like groups, right? So like maybe we'll grab like an EQ, just a simple Jeskola EQ3, and then we would, uh, so we just take like all of these and then connect them into the same EQ. Then we'll disconnect them over here. And then we'll just connect the EQ directly in instead, and then we'll call this something like string bus one. And this will give us individual control of the EQ over here. Then we'd go over here and we'd add another one, and then we'd hook up our saxophones to that. And then hook that into the meter, disconnect all of these. And then this would be our saxophone bus, right? And then you would have each of these kind of subgrouped and then you would make your own processing. You adjust the EQ on each level here. Maybe you'd put like a compressor on here and just do like a little bit of compression to each bus. And then we have all these grouped together. So kind of instead of mixing 20 things all at once, then maybe we'll end up mixing like four or five groups together in the end. We just want to make sure that we're EQing kind of aggressively and we're making sure that we take out a lot of this low end gain and we're making room for our other actual bass instruments which actually have good tone and good presence down there in the low end, right? So we want to EQ stuff so that this group is making room for this group's strong frequencies and then we cut out a little bit from this group in order to accommodate this group's strong frequencies. And then we would also use very careful stereo panning in order to place different parts of the mix further left or further right, which will also allow more room for the instruments to play nice together without majorly clashing in each other's frequency ranges. Okay, so one last thing here. I have prepared an example song. So I can prove that all of this works and all of this runs in real time. All of these machines can be played together and it isn't going to make my computer crash or lag or bog down or anything like that. I have removed like one or two of these that I originally showed in my original setup for this earlier in the video. So we have a... Uh, like we have 16 of them running side by side right now, 16 different instances of our VST hosts that are all running a different orchestral VST instrument. So like I said earlier, 16 tracks all side by side with no sort of processing or no sort of EQ or 
panning going on. This is going to be a mess mix-wise, but I want to show you in real time this is working and I'm not pulling any tricks on you or anything like that. So here we go. I'm just going to shut up and I'm just going to let this play. This last chunk here at the end, you'll notice that I just went all out and I made every single instrument play their pattern at the same time and just try to max this out and really try to make it lag or slow down. You'll see that it's not having any problem running this at all. So I think I've gone on long enough now. I think I've covered everything I need to and I really hope this video was as helpful to your cause as you wanted it to be. If you have any other questions at all, please just drop me a comment and let me know and I will get back to you as quick as I possibly can. Be super cool if you could like and subscribe and follow me for more recipes. You could also be my very first supporter on Patreon. It is a platform where creators can offer cool perks in exchange for a small monthly donation to their channel. This is probably the best way that you can support my channel financially if you are feeling so inclined. If you're unable to support the channel financially, then no worries at all. I still appreciate you just being here and checking out my content. Thanks for watching everyone, and I hope you all have fun out there.